Hello, I'm Doug with SETCOM. Today we'll cover the operating instructions for the Liberator Max Fire Wireless headset and MS900 Max base. Using the system is very simple and quick to start talking with your crew and public safety radios. First, let's quickly review the Liberator Max Fire Wireless system to make sure that we have a solid understanding of the product. The Liberator Max Fire Wireless system is not only the most advanced system for fire public safety crew communications, it is also the easiest system to install and maintain on the market today. For single radio configurations, installation consists of simply the MS900 Max base unit, RC18 radio cable, and however many charging cables and hanger hooks you need for the number of headsets going inside the vehicle. Forget wireless intercom headset systems of the past, where you have to install multiple base stations for the headsets, console install master stations, solder connections, and run excess cabling through the headliner. Combine all of this with no pairing associated with the wireless headsets and master station, and you have removed all the headaches with the wireless systems of yesteryear. Now let's review the operating instructions for the Liberator Max Fire Wireless System. First, you'll want to make sure that the antenna is installed on both the headsets and the base unit, as this will ensure optimal operating range for the product. Turn the volume control clockwise in order to turn on the headset. You will immediately hear one to three audible beeps that will indicate the battery level status. One beep is a low charge, two beeps is a medium charge, three beeps is a full charge, followed by a verbal indication on the current channel that the headset is on. The headset will be on the last channel that was used and will begin sending and receiving audio within six seconds. The LED status indicator will start yellow, then turn green. As other headsets on the same channel are turned on, they will join the network if they are on the same channel. Please note that on the CSB900 Max and CSB902 Max radio transmit headsets, the lower button on the right ear cup functions as a push to talk switch for the mobile radio connected to the base unit. Simply press to transmit and release when done. For the CSB901 Max and CSB905 Max intercom only headsets, the lower button on the right ear cup functions as a microphone muting switch. Press once to mute the mic. There will be two audible beeps. Press again to unmute the mic. There will be two beeps at a different pitch. To change the current channel, press and hold Four. down both lower PTT buttons for five. five seconds and the headset will begin to cycle through the available operating channels. Continuing to hold down the button will advance the channel once each second. Release the buttons to lock onto the channel you want to be on. All headsets must be on the same channel to remain connected as a network, unless the operator is intending to join another network. If using a portable radio with the headset, it must be turned off or disconnected when changing channels, or it will be inadvertently keyed to transmit. If needed, a portable radio can be attached to the headset with a suitable SETCOM PRAC cable. With the portable radio off, attach the PRAC adapter to the accessory port on the radio. Then plug the smaller round connector into the jack on the left ear cup. Then turn the radio on. The radio's volume control will set the received audio volume in the headset. To transmit over the radio, press and hold the PTT button on the left ear cup and release it when transmission is completed. After 15 minutes of no movement, the headset will go into sleep mode to save battery and the LED will turn off. When the headset is moved or picked up, it will wake up and resume normal operation. If the headset isn't going to be used for a long period of time, it's recommended to turn it off using the volume control knob. You can turn off the headset by turning the volume control knob fully counterclockwise until a click is heard. To charge the headset, plug a power source into the charging jack on the left ear cup. The power source needs to be 5 to 14 volts DC and can be a wall wart power supply or a cable providing 12 volt power. While charging, the LED will be orange and the headset can be used while charging if needed. A full charge from low battery condition takes approximately six hours. Once a network is established, all the users will be able to hear and speak to each other. If one user moves out of range, the other users will not receive a notification and will not be able to speak or hear that user. If that user moves back into range, communications resume normally. If a group of users, all in the same channel, splits into two groups by moving out of range, they will form a new network. Still in the same channel, if they then move back into range, they will meld back into the original network. 
Two networks can exist simultaneously without interference if they are on separate channels, but they will not be able to communicate with each other. A solid green light indicates that the headset is on and not charging. A solid orange light indicates that the headset is charging. The headset can be turned on or off. A blinking yellow light indicates that the headset is fully charged, plugged into charging cable, and the headset is turned off. If no light is on the LED, the headset is turned off and unplugged, or battery is completely discharged, or headset is on and asleep, plugged in or not. If the LED flashes orange 10 times, the channel has been changed and is saving new settings to memory. The SETCOM MS900 Max is a wireless radio interface for use with up to seven Liberator Max series wireless radio transmit or intercom only headsets. The MS900 Max is typically connected to a single mobile radio through use of the proper radio cable. Adding an RRC950 radio routing controller and a 25-0108 connecting cable will allow operation with two radios. One radio cable will be required for each radio. The RRC950 has a toggle switch that allows for switching transmit, receive, and PTT functions between the two radios. Receive can either be summed or switched. The MS900 Max can be powered from 12 to 24 volts DC, supplied by a vehicle power system. The unit has an internal one amp ATO type fuse, but it is recommended that the vehicle power source also be fused with at least one amp. The system starts up as soon as power is applied. No pairing is required to use the headsets with the base unit. The headsets only need to be on the same channel as the base unit, which is displayed on the channel indicator LED screen. Changing channels is accomplished by pressing the channel select button on the MS900 Max base unit. Similar to the headsets, hold the channel select button down until the channels start cycling on the LED screen. Once you are on your desired channel, simply release the channel select button. Here's a diagram of a typical fire install. Connect power cable to DC power source, 12 to 24 volt DC. Red is positive, green is ground. If two radios are required, a SETCOM RRC950 can be connected to the RRC jack. Refer to the RRC950 user guide for more information. Mount the MS900 Max using four small mounting holes or the two larger holes on the enclosure flanges. Mounting screws are supplied by user. There are two LED dots at the bottom of the channel display. The left dot flashes to indicate the unit is powered up and operating normally, and the right dots light up when PTT has been activated by a headset. The MS900 Max should be mounted in a location where the channel select button is accessible and the channel indicator can be easily seen. If the MS900 Max must be installed on a vertical surface, it is recommended to fold the antenna so the main shaft is vertical. To orient the antenna, loosen the connector, place the antenna in the desired position, then re-tighten the connector. Once the antenna connector is tightened, do not try to turn the antenna. In a typical installation, the antenna is pointed directly upwards as shown here, or directly downwards for ceiling or headliner mount. The system will work with the antenna oriented horizontally, but effective range may be somewhat reduced. Now let's review the MS900 Max controls and adjustments. Remove top cover carefully to make sure internal cables, wiring, and ground contacts do not get damaged. Transmit audio level is normally factory preset to the correct level for the radio type specified when the MS900 Max is ordered. If a different transmit level is required, the transmit level can be set from zero, which is the highest, to F, the lowest, to accommodate various radios. Please call SETCOM tech support for assistance if needed. Here are the transmit and receive audio settings. Receive audio level is normally set by the volume control on the mobile radio. If further adjustment is needed, receive level control can be used to adjust receive volume. If receive level control does not provide enough adjustment range, the receive range switch can be set to allow higher or lower level settings. 
Default is both sections set to off. To increase receive level, set section one to on. To decrease receive level, set section two to on. Do not set both sections to on. Use only one section or the other. While the MS900 Max can be used with up to seven Liberator Max series wireless headsets, forming a talk group of up to eight total wireless devices, it is not designed to be used with another MS900 Max. When an MS900 Max is connected to one or more additional MS900 Maxes on the same channel, this may result in a malfunction and on rare occasions the non-function of one or more of the MS900 Maxes. If one or more MS900 Maxes inadvertently connect in the same talk group, for example, when two apparatus with MS900 Maxes arrive on a scene and both are on the same channel, simply change one of the MS900 Maxes and its associated headsets to another open channel. That wraps up the operating instructions for the Liberator Max Fire System. If you happen to need further assistance, please do not hesitate to contact our technical support team at 650-965-8020, extension 703, or tech at setcomcorp.com. Thanks for watching.